All right. Good morning. Everything good now, Judy? We're good? All right, thanks. All right. Do we have any preliminary matters before the jury? Um, just, just two preliminary matters, Your Honor. Okay. 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 All right. Here are paper copies. The thumb drive contains electronic copies of these as well as the excerpted audio recordings that were entered. And uh, okay. Well, I kind of need a thumb drive for each audio recording, but oh, a separate thumb drive for each. It's it's, it's marked at different exhibits, so I have to have it as ex different exhibits. We so. Okay, good. We'll go through them and see what we have. And you have yours as well? Uh, your, yes, Your Honor, if I may approach. I okay. Have, um, this is uh, from this exhibit, 40 redacted. Okay, just give it to you. Uh, the photographs that were in this exhibit. The knives, right. Uh, yes. Okay, perfect. All right. Great. We'll go through those, and if we need anything else, we'll let you know, okay? Just because, so we can have them numbered that way, correct? Sure. All right. I, I got to keep Jamie happy. Yes. No okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Sure. Thank you. You can be seated. All right. Just a reminder, Mr. Depp, you're still under oath. Okay, sir? Yes. yes All sir. right. Cross-examination. All right. Good morning, everyone. I hope you had a nice weekend. 
Mr. Depp, we've talked about this uh, a little bit, but you've testified that abuse can come in many forms, correct? Physical being one of them, right? Uh, yes, indeed. Emotional? Indeed. Verbal? Indeed. Psychological abuse? Indeed. Some of those sort of flow into the other. I'd like to talk, understood. I'd like to talk about um, some of that abuse. Um, can we pull up exhibit 582, please? Your Honor, this is a recording, Defendant's Exhibit 582, that we will play um, the entirety of. All right, any objection to 582? No objection, Your Honor. All right, 582 in evidence. Put your fucking cigarettes out on someone else. You fucking have consequences for your actions. That's it. Shut up, fat ass. Yeah, you got me there. Can you play that one more time, please, Michelle? Objection, Your Honor. I'll sustain the objection. Move on. Mr. Depp, and when, when Ms. Hurd tells you in that recording to go put your cigarettes out on someone else, you don't deny that, but instead you simply say, shut up, fat ass. Is that correct? Um, I think that was another grossly exaggerated moment of Ms. Hurd's. I, don't, I did not put a cigarette out on her or throw a cigarette at her. Let's pull up Exhibit 581, please. This is another recording that we'll play the entirety of, with Your Honor's leave. Any objection to 581? No objection. 581. Well, I, well, I fucked up and cried in my bedroom after I had dumped you a fucking week, week prior. A fucking week prior, after you beat the shit out of me, and then a week later you show in my show up at my doorstep in my room saying you want to say goodbye. Okay, say goodbye. Oh, I said it. Yes, you did say it. I'll go to the text messages so that we are clear yes, on the tape. Yes, you said it before to me. Okay, no doubt, <laughs> but you did not say you're gonna come over to say bye. I mean, a huge mistake. You didn't. You didn't say that to me. You didn't say that to me? Well, I won't do it again. What's the mistake then? Didn't, did you or did you not say you were coming over to say bye? Can we please pull up exhibit 598? Is this another audio? It is, Your Honor. Um, and I, I will give the, um, the excerpts that we propose to play. Uh, and I'll say, uh, Your Honor, this is a it's a lengthy recording where. Well, we, I already have 598A in evidence, so. Right, and I just wanted to, to clarify. Um, spoke with Ms. Myers this morning. We're gonna we're gonna speak at a break. It, it's a it's a we, we're trying to be very careful about whether there's a third party on the tape. This is one where at the very end, um, someone else comes in. Um, but Ms. Myers and I will speak, and we may be to the extent your your honors agreeable. We may be agreeable to just entering the whole thing um, as evidence. But for now, since there's a very small portion at the end that we're not gonna play of a third party, we'll just, I'll just give you the excerpts if that works. Well, then I need 598B and I yes. need to know what the time of the excerpts are and- We'll prepare that for you, Your Honor. Thank you. <clears throat> well, I need it now, I mean. I, I have the, okay. the excerpts. So this would be 598B. Okay. And it's seconds one through 20. And then it's minutes 30 minutes and two seconds through 31 minutes and 45 seconds. Okay. All right. Any objection to 598B then? No objection, Your Honor. Thank you. And that one is. You may have not been able to do. No, and then exactly what I said. What did you say? At least I'm not doing it behind your back and telling you. Okay. He gave me shit that I was recording, and I said, yeah, I'm recording, but at least I'm telling you. Okay. And so, if you had asked me not to, I wouldn't. Well, record, huh? Okay, so the next excerpt is minute 30 and 30 minutes and two seconds. is necessary, especially between you and I. It is of utmost importance. 
The next move, if I don't walk away, or just go out for a little while, just it's just gonna be it's just gonna be a bloodbath. And like it, you know, like it was on the island, of course, like it was, you know. Why be miserable? Let's just can we just the options are that have some some someone's understanding for each other's. Please, please, can we? Because yeah. I'm not trying to say, hey, my God, no one in their right mind is going to choose a bloodbath over walking away. Obviously, if you're given the option between the two, then why has it been chosen so many times? <laughs> It's the, that snowball. It is not a distinct choice. Either one of us make at any discernible point. No, it's stubbornness and it's all You know, and it shit. builds, right? Like mm -hmm. you build, I build, you know. It isn't like at one moment either of us sign a certificate of saying or like sign the contract or say, okay, now I'll blow that. No. So acting as though there's a choice between the two is, is irrelevant. I'm not asking you to stay over having a bloodbath. I'm asking you, I mean, over walking away. I'm not asking you to have a bloodbath over walking away. I'm asking you to work it out over prolonging it and making it bigger. Can you please pull up Defense Exhibit 161, which was admitted into evidence on Thursday, Your Honor, I believe? Okay. Yes, it was. Thank you. Now, that recording that we just heard, Mr. Depp, isn't the first time that you um, refer to an argument as a bloodbath. In fact, in this text exchange that we saw on Friday, when you inform Ms. Heard that there exists a book entitled Disco Bloodbath, and she asks you if it is about last Friday night by any chance. You say, how can you make me smile about such a hideous moment? Yes, it is. Funny bitch. Did I read that right? Certainly did, sir. Thank you. Can we pull up exhibit 586, please? Your Honor, the only um, the, the portion of this exhibit that we would plan to play, it's a recording, is minutes 7.35 to 8.20. Okay, but I already have a 586A. So, so this would be 586B. If 7.35 to what? 8.20. Thank you. And no objection to 586B? No objection. All right, 586B. Oh, yes, you do, because you wouldn't have used that as a way to hit me. I was pouring my heart out to you. What do you do? Let me get it. Let me get it. Stab in here. That's what you saw, huh? You listen to me cry. And you're like, now I can get her. Is that what you think? You just do it without thinking. You do it without thinking, huh? You don't. Get him. Stab him when you can. You throw a swing when you can. And what win better than to win I'm on the floor? Because that's when it's really good to hit someone. Can you please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 366? This is another recording, Your Honor, that we would propose to admit all of, although we will only be playing minute 320 through 338. All right. So no objection to 366 in its entirety. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct, Your Honor. All right. 366 in evidence. What he's only playing part of oh, plaintiffs. I'm sorry.
Can you please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 396? Your Honor, portions of this were used on Thursday, so with your leave, we'd like to introduce this as 396B um, with the following excerpts. 244 and 0 seconds through 244 and 16 seconds. And then 249 and 30 seconds through 249 and 55 seconds. All right, any objection to 396B? No objection, Your Honor. 396B. If you could please go to 249 and 30 seconds, please. heard say get off me right no i did not i heard What's distant screaming and i heard i'll talk to you later i'll talk to you later i was look at exhibit eight five like seven please <clears throat> that's defendant's 857 yes your honor okay is this another audio file? Oh, no. It's not, no. Okay, is there any? Oh, okay. Mr. Depp, I'd like to direct your attention to the second to last text. Yes. On this, this is a text from you to your agent, Christian Carino, on August 15th, 2016, correct? That's correct. That's what it looks like, yes. Objection, Your Honor. Relevance and prejudice. If you could approach for a moment.
Your Honor, to, for the sake of time, um, I'll, I'll go ahead and um, may I ask the witness about the portions that we discussed, and then we can provide a redacted version. Okay. Mr. Depp, uh, in, this, in this text message from you to Christian Carino, your agent, on August 15, 2016, um, you, you tell him, uh, you, you, you go on at some, some length about Amber, but you say, she will hit the wall hard four exclamation points. And then later down you say, I can only hope that karma kicks in and takes the gift of breath from her. Did I read that right? Objection compound. No, I'll allow it. Mr. Um, one. You, you read that correctly. And this wasn't the first time that you talked about Amber hitting the wall hard. Let's pull up exhibit 213, please. Hitting the wall hard based on the we'll accusations that she bit, brought. Depp. I'm sorry, I was talking. Is that all right? You had you, you'd answered my question. We'll take a look at the next oh, exhibit. Thank you. Man. As long as you're happy, sir. Mr. Depp, this is a text that you sent to Bruce Whitkin on February 4th, 2014. The text where, at the top of the page. Where am I looking, sir? On, the, on your screen, please. I I'm sorry. figured that out. The, the top text on the screen. Okay, I didn't know if there was a specific, if it was third from the bottom or somewhere around the corner. What would you like me to do? This is a text that you sent to Bruce Whitkin on February 4th, 2014, correct? February 24th, 2014, yes. Okay. Yes. Your Honor, I move for admission of this exhibit with uh, just that text displayed. With the redactions applied and also the identifiers. That's okay. Yep. Redaction we identifiers. Have that. We All have right. that ready. All right. 213 in evidence with redactions. for the admission of this permission to publish your honor it is in evidence Thank you. So you can publish it mr depp on february 4th 2014 you tell mr witkin amber and i hit the wall hard you see that i do sir and that's the same phrase that you used in your text to mr carino from 2016 that we just read correct they are similar words, but they have different meanings. If, uh, Can we pull I don't up know if um, that makes exhibit, sense to you? But. Exhibit <clears throat> four ninety eight, please. Mr. Depp, is this a text exchange that you had with Ms. Hurd uh, on or about October 28, 2015? Yes, sir. And I'd like to uh, direct your attention to the third text down. Yes. Your Honor, I'd move for the admission of Defendant's Exhibit 498 with uh, identifiers redacted. Any objection? Uh, relevance, Your Honor. All right, what's... May we approach? Okay, sure.
Can you pull up Exhibit 330, please? <clears throat> Mr. Depp, I'd like to turn your attention to the, the, the middle text on this page, which is a text from you to someone named Ryan A. Uh, on January 12th, 2015. Do you see that? January. I'm sorry, uh, the second one from the last. Yes. Uh, January 12th? Yes. Yes, sir. Is that Ryan Adams, the singer? Uh, yes, it is. Um, Your Honor, move for uh, admission of Defendants Exhibit 330. Um, just plan on asking him about that text. Uh, objection relevance, Your Honor. <laughs> Your Honor, I'm, if we, I'm happy yeah, to approach if you want. Can you pull up exhibit 620, please? Mr. Depp, I'd like to uh, turn your attention to text number 40. Okay. It's the third one down. Yes. This is a text from you to Malcolm Connolly. Is that right? That's correct. Your Honor, I'd move for admission of this document um, with the third text down. If I just... Sure. I'm happy to approach to discuss if, you, if your Honor would like. Uh, relevance objection again, Your Honor. Okay, if you want to approach. Redacted. Thank you. 
Mr. Rottenborn, if that's coming in, we'd allow like um, the contextual text messages as well. If we might take a look, please. I'm sorry. I, I, uh, we would like to take a look and just make sure the contextual text messages are coming in with the one that you're directing Mr. Depp to. I, I'm just going to address the court. I, if I, that that was the text message that I would like to get in. If you if they're, I'm not sure what she's no, asking. We'll Your just Honor. we'll just we'll just go forward with that text message for now. Okay. Mr. Depp, do you remember last week uh, the jury saw the video of you, um, uh, as you called it, assaulting the cupboards in that kitchen on Sweeter Avenue? Yes, sir. Very well said. And that was on or about February 10th, 2016, correct? Objection calls. I've asked for the metadata. I've asked for the date and received nothing. Okay. Um, this text you sent on February 10th, 2016 to, uh, to Malcolm Connolly. Malcolm yes. Connolly is one of your security guards, correct? Yes, he is. And in this text, you say, thanks, dear Mal. I'm just at the point where I feel like I'm going to puke all the time. Once I get this shit moving and get myself out of her level of shit, I will never mention this cunt's name again, ever again. And the first prick that asks about her gets a warning. Should the single cell prick decide to push it, he never forgets me and will always be remembered throughout his life as the guy that got his fucking nose bit off, chewed up, and swallowed by Johnny Depp. While I do have some civilized bones in my body, just on a matter of principle, I must force him to watch me fulfill this promise of mangling his motherfucker of a beezer. Love you, X. Did I read that right? You did. I'd like to turn to your views on Ms. Hurd's career. Can you please pull up uh, Exhibit 195? I'd like to direct your attention to the second to last text from the bottom. This is a text message exchange between you and Ms. Hurd on October 29th, 2013, correct? It looks like it is, yes. Your Honor, I'd move for the admission of Defendants Exhibit 195 with the appropriate identifiers redacted. Uh, we would object on relevance grounds, Your Honor. Your Honor, th this is him expressing his views on her taking a meeting about a movie, her, her wait, career, wait, his views. So 195 will be in evidence with redacted with the identifiers. <clears throat> Mr. Depp, you see the, the text that from, from Amber that says, I'm at a coffee meeting now. You see that? I do. Right sir. there. So she tells you at, uh, at 12.41 p.m., I'm at a coffee meeting now. We'll be home soon. And then you respond, holy crap, whores. No goddamn meetings. No movies. Why? 
Why do you deviate from our agreement? What species of meeting? Fuck it, just tell me when you get home. Did I read that right? You did, but a coffee meeting. You didn't want her to take the meeting that she was taking that day, correct? Um, it seems as though we had an agreement. Uh, what seems like we had an agreement to do something together. I'm actually asking, asking what species of meeting. So this is not necessarily a, 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 an angry text. It's just why do you deviate from our agreement? It's not about her doing films. How do you think she got Aquaman, sir? You tell her no goddamn meetings, no movies, because you didn't want her acting. You wanted to control her career, correct? Objection compound. That's uh, I'll, I'll, hold on, untrue, Mr. and it's a Mr. great Depp, guess. Sir. All Sorry. right, yes, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Sorry. Let's, That's we, right. can, we can move on. Uh, exhibit 394, please. <coughs> Defendant's exhibit. Thank you. Mr. Depp, if you can take a look at the, the fourth text down, this is a text from you to Dr. Kipper on, um, it's in the, the timestamp issue, I believe it was sent on March 8th, 2015 in Australia, timestamped March 7th, 2015. Do you see that? I do, sir. Your Honor, I'd move for the admission of 394. No objection with the proper redactions of the rest of the text messages and the identifiers. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. 394 and evidence with redactions. Permission to publish? All right. Yes, yes, sir. <clears throat> Mr. Depp, on this date, uh, right after you had suffered an injury to your finger, you text Dr. Kipper and you say, Hi, fucked man, had another one. I just cannot live like this. She is as full of shit as a Christmas goose. I'm done, no more. The constant insults, the demeaning, belittling, most heartbreaking spew that is only released from a malicious, evil, and vindictive cunt. But you know what? Far more hurtful than her venomous and degrading, endless educational ranting is her hideously and purposely hurtful tirades and her goddamn shocking treatment of the man she was meant to love, above all. Here's the real deal, mate. Her obsession with herself is far more important she is so fucking ambitious. She's so desperate for success and fame. That's probably why I was acquired, mate. Although she has hammered me with what a sad old man has been I am, Cowan has done me the most cruel of favors. I'm so very sad. I cut the top of my middle finger off. What should I do? Except, of course, go to a hospital. I'm so embarrassed for jumping into anything with her. Fuck the world. Did I read that right? Yes, Mr. Rottenborn. So even as you are ranting about Miss Heard to Dr. Kipper, even as you are talking about her ambition and expressing your objections to that, you still admit to him that you cut the top of your middle finger off, correct? Objection compound. All right, sustain so compound. You're complaining about her ambition in this text to her, to, to Dr. Kipper, correct? Um, I'm realizing that her ambition is far stronger than her uh, supposed feelings for me, yes. And there's nothing about this text that's trying to protect her. P 
protect her from, and from what and you tell dr kipper i cut the top of my middle finger off in this text correct it's just the way it was worded it doesn't mean that no. i actually literally cut my finger off after at the age of 12 finding the only thing that gave me a piece which is playing the guitar very unlikely why didn't i start lopping off digits when i was uh, 13 then? just the way it was worded now miss Her yeah. miss heard wasn't the only one who had a problem with your you can take that down miss heard wasn't the only one who had a problem with your drinking and abuse of alcohol correct objection compound uh, all right i'll sustain the objection if you miss heard wasn't the only one who had a problem with your drinking correct so if anyone had a problem with my drinking at any time in my life, it was me. The only person that I have ever abused in my life is myself. In fact, you tried to hide your drinking from your daughter, Lily Rose, didn't you? Objection, relevance. What's the relevance? When your nerves are pushed. Sure, can, can we approach your honor? Okay. Pardon. Can you pull up exhibit 207, please? Can you scroll down, please? Thank you. Mr. Depp, I'd like to direct your attention to the last text on this page. It's a text from you to um, Kevin Murphy. He was your, uh, your estate manager, correct? He was. This is a text from you to Kevin Murphy on January 21st, 2014, correct? Yes, sir. Your Honor, I'd move for the admission of that portion of Defendant's Exhibit 207 with redactions. With the uh, identifiers redacted, that's right. fine. Thank you. 207. Permission to publish? Yes, sir. And in this text to Kevin Murphy on February, or sorry, January 21st, 2014, you say, just trying to get over my shocking discussion with Vanessa that lasted five plus hours. Vanessa's your former partner, correct? She's the mother of my children, yes. The mother of your children, that's right. And then you say, I feel ill and have invested my guts into some side corner. Now, Lily Rose hates me because she thinks I'm drinking and she's right. But I can't admit or I fucking die in her eyes. Thanks for that one, Vanessa. Come to master in main house. Did I read that correctly? You did. 
Can you pull up Exhibit 1092, please? Mr. Depp, is this a picture of you passed out in a chair during daylight hours? Again, isn't passed out. Uh, a, that's a very specific term. Sleep could be one. Passed out. Um, let's just let, let's try it this way. This is a picture of you in a chair, correct? Th that is correct. Move for the admission of 1092, Your Honor. <clears throat> Any objection? I, I'm, I'm, I'm relevance, Your Honor. Your yeah. Honor, I'm, I'm trying to move this along, well, and when we stop with relevance, well, I, I just, do you want to lay a foundation? I just don't. This is a picture of Mr. Depp. It, 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 we've introduced another um, on oh, Thursday, you, another you picture want, of that. Approach. What Maybe is the date of this photograph? I'm sorry. Can you take that down and put um, put up Exhibit 470, Michelle, please? Mm -hmm. Mr. Depp, is this is the bottom text on this page a text exchange or a text message from you to your personal assistant Stephen Duders on September 3rd, 2015? That's what it looks like, yes, sir. Your Honor, I'd move for the admission of this exhibit um, with just that text and the appropriate redactions. Exhibit 470. Yeah. Uh, again, a relevance, Your Honor. And cumulative. I'll allow this one if we Thank just... you, Your Honor. With the redactions. Permission to publish, Your Honor. All right. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mr. Depp, uh, in the effort to, to move this along, I'm not going to read the whole thing, um, but I'm going to start with the, the, the word main bits, which is five lines down. You write to Mr. Duders on September 3rd, 2015, main bits needed are Xanax and Adderall and I want no judgment from Kipper or Debbie. Kipper means Dr. David Kipper, correct? That's correct. And Debbie means Debbie Lloyd, your sobriety nurse, correct? That is correct. Just found out from Joel last night how much I spent on having Kipper and Debbie around. Millions and fucking millions, mate. All the while, Debbie just hung around broad BCH and gave me new meds like every two weeks. She was on set maybe four times. Wow. And five money symbols. Sorry, just how it is. Did I read that right? You did. Can we pull up exhibit 587, please? This is a recording, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. 
and I already have 587A, so this is 587B. 587B, Your Honor. <coughs> um, the excerpts to be played are 1940 through 1953 and 2304 through 2329. Any objection? No objection, Your Honor. Right. 587B in evidence. In that clip, Mr. Depp, you tell Ms. Heard, I'm never getting clean and sober, correct? It sounds like to me uh, that, uh, yes, yeah, either that or I have never been clean and sober. Thank it's you. One of the Let's two. play 2304, please. the big scheme and think that it's nothing but hurt us. And why? Because a call of booze doesn't make it easier for you to see how clearly that it... You gotta, you stop. Think, you gotta stop with the coke all, and booze. All the coke, you, all the coke you've done today and all the booze you've drank today, By the way, has it helped you? I just got Has it helped us? I just got the coke. Has it helped us? It's Sunday. Yeah, I know because la yesterday you were a thousand times better. Right. Yesterday did we... I'd like to turn now to a few more of your words around the time that you went into detox about how you viewed Amber's role in that process, Mr. Depp. Can you please pull up plaintiff's exhibit 120 underscore 40? And your honor, um, 120 underscore 41 was admitted the other, the other day, but um, I'd like to introduce this as a separate exhibit. So 120B please. and that would be underscore 40, you said, 40? Yes, your honor. Okay. Any objection to that? Um, if I may, it just came up on the screen. Okay. Mr. Depp, while they're looking at that, is the second text from the bottom a text that you sent to Amber's mom, Paige, on August 19th, 2014? Yes, that's correct, sir. And this is when you were either in the middle of or finishing up your detox process from Roxycodone, correct? That is correct. All right. In, no, no objection? No objection. Okay. 120B in evidence. You want to publish? Or, um, as is, correct? Uh, with with the other okay. That's fine. text messages redacted. All right. Thank you. Oh, with the, okay. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> And in this text message that you write Amber's mom on August 19th, 2014, you say, my dearest Paige, how unbelievably kind and pure your message was. I am beyond thankful to have you in my life. There is no luckier man on this earth to have the strength that Amber gives me and the full support of each of you individually that I've gotten helps immeasurably. I don't need to explain the horrors to you. You know as well as I. What you do need to know that your daughter has risen far above the nightmarish task of taking care of this poor old junkie. Never a second has gone by that she didn't look out for me or have her eyes on me to make sure that I was okay. Why and words are truly feeble in attempting to explain her heroism in a text. Suffice to say that I have never met or loved a woman or a thing more. She has the strength of a thousand men and that is due to no one or nothing but you, sweetheart. Thank you, I love you, your son outlaw. 
Did I read that correctly? You, you did, sir. I'd like to take a look at a, another document. Um, uh, Exhibit 272, please. Is this a text message that you shared, a uh, text message exchange between you and Amber the following day on April 20th, 2014? Yes, sir. Your Honor, permission to uh, move for the admission of Exhibit 272 and ask for permission to publish. Uh, with the identifiers removed, we have no okay. objection. All right, remove the identifiers. Two seventy-two in evidence as redacted. Now, Mr. Depp, you testified on Thursday that you saw nothing wrong with referring to Amber as a lesbian camp counselor when she was trying to get you to stop using drugs. But she let's take a look at what same, you say in she this had used text. That term before in she... this text, Mr. Depp, you say, just to let you know that I'm fine, my angel. I miss you, of course, but this was the right thing to do to speed up the process. I love you more than life. Yours, Steve. Did I read that correctly? You did. You can take that down. Now, you've brought this lawsuit about the op-ed specifically, but for years prior to the date that Ms. Heard wrote the op-ed, there were numerous negative news stories about you. You'd agree with that, correct? Objection compound. All right. I'll sustain it to compound. For years prior to 2018, when Amber wrote the op-ed, there were numerous negative news stories about you that were released into the public, correct? Objection calls for speculation. Yep. I'll allow it if you can answer. Um, by 2018, you're saying? Correct. Yes, it all started with um, Ms. Hurd going to going directly to a court to get a TRO, which is with a bruise on her face and paparazzi. Uh, that, that was the sort of beginning of the, the ball rolling down the hill and gaining momentum. There were lots of negative stories me. about you prior to May 27, 2016, when Amber went into court, correct? Objection asked and answered. Now it's 2016, I'll, I'll allow it if you can answer. There are plenty of negative stories about you prior to that date, weren't there? So I've, I've, I've been in this, the racket of Hollywood since 1984. Um, my- Mr. Uh, Depp, it's, that's, I'm asking you a yes or no question. There were plenty of negative news stories about you prior to May 27, 2016, correct? From 1984 up until then, they're both. They're both so of course, people write negative stories. Sure, and you just testified to the jury that it all started on May 27, 2016. So that's why I asked you to clarify about the negative stories prior to that date. And you'd agree that there were, correct? Can you be specific about the stories? Of course, there there sure. been negative stories. Permission to approach, Your Honor. All right. Your Honor, I have here a, um, numerous exhibits in one sort of compendium, um, all uh, press articles about Mr. Depp, if I may approach. Thank you. All right, yes, sir. Thank you so much. Your Honor, in, in it, Having received this, I, I would like to preemptively lodge a hearsay lack of foundation. And I, he hasn't I, got him in evidence yet. I don't. Are you moving? No, I'm, I'm happy to. I'm happy to approach, but they're certainly not being admitted for the truth of the matter asserted. But I'm happy to approach and okay, discuss if you like.
Mr. Depp, if you could please take a look at the, the stack of articles in front of you. Um, yes, it's a stack of hit pieces. Yes, the, the first one is called the Ms. Hurd's Public just, City Team. Mr. Depp, I'm, I'm, we're going to try to get through this as quickly as possible. I'm just um, I'm going to ask you about the are. first one. Well, we're going to we're going to talk about them. The first one is entitled uh, is from the Guardian. Do you see that? Apparently drunk. Yes, case. and this is a, an article from sep from November fifteenth, twenty fourteen, entitled "Apparently Drunk Johnny Depp Cut Off at Hollywood Film Awards Ceremony." Correct. Uh, that's what it says. Yes, sir. And the next article is an article from May seventh. 2016. It's entitled Johnny Depp, friends and family seriously concerned about him. Here's why. Yes. Correct? How did they know? The next article from May 1st, 2017, before yes, Ms. Hurd filed uh, for a restraining order, a year and a half before she published, um, uh, no, sorry, this would be, this would be after May 1st, 2017. Uh, the headline is, Johnny Depp has a clear and epic sense of entitlement, ex-managers say. Yes. Published in The Hollywood Reporter, correct? I was in a lawsuit with him, sir. The next article from May 10th, 2017 is entitled, Johnny Depp, a star in crisis and the insane story of his missing millions. Did I read yes. that right? That's straight from the same lawsuit, sir. The next article, also from May 10th, 2017, a year and a half before the op-ed was published, says Johnny Depp reportedly drank heavily and was constantly late on the new Pirates movie set. Did I read that right? You did, reportedly. The next article, also pieces. from May 10, 2017. Mr. This, Depp, this is a pathetic attempt. Mr. Depp, please just respond to the question that I'm asking you. What's your the question, next question Mr. The next, the next document, an article published in Vanity Fair, on May 10th, 2017, yes, is entitled Johnny Depp's Financial Woes Might Sink the Next Pirates of the Caribbean. Did I read that right? You you did. I don't know. The how next my article financial woes would do May that. 25th, 2017, a year and a half before the op-ed was published. An article entitled Where Did It All Go Wrong for Johnny Depp? After a string of flops and a ton of bad press. Johnny Depp's star power looks as wobbly as Jack Sparrow on a plank. Did I read that right? You read that very, very well. The next one, Hollywood Reporter, May 27th, 2017. Headline, Pirates of the Caribbean, The Diminishing Returns of Johnny Depp. Did I read that right? You certainly did. Hollywood Reporter were very nice to me. At the time. July 12th, 2017. Why are all of Johnny Depp's movies bombing at the box office? Did I read that right? Um, you certainly did. November 4th, 2017, a year and a month before Amber published the op-ed, headline, Johnny Depp allegedly showed up drunk to movie premiere, reports say. Did allegedly I read that correctly? reports say. This is hearsay. June 21st, 2018, six months before the op-ed was published. Vanity Fair article, The Real Reason Johnny Depp Used an Earpiece on a Film Set. I think that was explained read that in court correctly? the other day. Oh, you did, yeah. June 21st, 2018, six months before the op-ed was published, mm -hmm. a Rolling Stone article entitled The Trouble with Johnny Depp, Multi-Million Dollar Lawsuits, A Haze of Booze and Hash, A Marriage Gone Very Wrong, and A Lifestyle He Can't Afford, Inside the Trials of Johnny Depp. Did I read that right? You did. You should read the article. It's and the wonderful. last one, the last one, June 22nd, 2018, the Daily Mail, vodka for breakfast, 72-hour drug binges, and spending sprees that beggar belief. Allison Boshoff reveals why Hollywood's reeling over what's being called Johnny Depp's career suicide note. Did I read that correctly? You did. Who's Allison Boshoff and how does she know? Mr. Depp, you can't name oh, a single actress who has benefited in her career by coming forward and stating that she was the victim of domestic violence, can you? I'm sorry, Objection what was calls for speculation. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. 
When Amber made abuse accusations against you in May 2016, fair to say it got a lot of press attention, right? Objection calls for speculation. All right, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. When Amber made abuse accusations against you in May 2016, you became aware that it got a lot of press attention, correct? Very quickly, I became aware. And she became associated with those abuse accusations that she made against you in May 2016, correct? To your knowledge. Objection calls for speculation. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. You, you became associated with those domestic abuse accusations that she made against you, correct? I think that's clear. And yes. you understood that she and you understood that she became associated with those same accusations that she made, correct? You testified to that. Well, she had a choice, I didn't. And you've talked about the immediate impact that those accusations on May 27th, 2016 allegedly had on your career, correct? Yes. You testified earlier in your examination on direct that when Amber made those accusations in 2016, you said you lost, quote, no nothing less than everything, correct? That is correct, sir. But you didn't try to get the restraining order lifted in 2016, did you? I, I don't. If she wanted a restraining order. It's a yes order. or no question. You didn't try to get the restraining no, order. No, why would I? And you didn't have a divorce trial where you could respond to Amber's accusations of abuse in 2016, did you? Objection calls for a legal conclusion. I'm asking him if he had a trial. That's Sorry, a fact. I'll allow you didn't have a divorce trial where you could respond to Amber's accusations of abuse, did you? No, there were no charges pressed against you. Me. Chose she didn't not tell to... the police that I had done anything. She didn't mention my name. And, and you didn't you didn't have a California divorce judge decide these facts, did you? Objection has been answered. No, you chose objection. You chose question. not to try to clear your name at that time through any sort of legal proceeding, correct? Objection asked and answered. I'll, I'll sustain the objection. And you chose to sign a divorce agreement in which you stated that Amber had not made any false statements about you for financial gain. We looked at that, correct? Objection asked and answered. Asked and answered. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. In fact, you waited until Amber wrote the op-ed in the Washington Post in December of 2018 to file a lawsuit against her, correct? That is correct. Can you pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 2, please? It was the only time that Permission I was to publish, able to speak and use my own voice. You chose not to sue the Washington Post in this lawsuit, correct? Objection, relevance, asked and answered. It's not been asked and answered. It hasn't been asked and answered, but I'm not sure what the relevance is. You chose to sue only Ms. Heard and not the newspaper that published this article, correct? Objection, compound. All right, I'll sustain as to compound. You chose not to sue the Washington Post, correct? Objection, relevance. I'll sustain the objection. You only sued the author of this article, Amber Heard, correct? Which seems she was the one making the statements. Yes, I had the opportunity to fight back. Permission to publish Exhibit 2, Your Honor? All right, Exhibit 2 is already in evidence. Mr. Depp, you realize that the only job for this jury to decide. Yes, sir. Its only job is to determine whether this op-ed and this op-ed alone is defamatory. Objection calls for a legal conclusion. I'll sustain the objection. This is the only writing that you are, that's the subject of this lawsuit that you brought, correct? Same objection. It's fact, Your Honor. He brought the lawsuit. I'll allow that question. This is a version of that story of the op-ed that I have never seen. The one that was published before, the one that, the only one I've ever seen is the one that was published prior to this. They changed the title because they were in fear of trouble. Well, I move to strike that last testimony, Your Honor. Well, I mean, it's clear. Whether it's the online edition or this edition in the paper, this article is the only statement, the only publication of anything that's the subject of the lawsuit that you brought, correct? Objection asked and answered. I'll sustain the objection. This op-ed, Mr. Depp, does not discuss any of the details of your relationship that we've seen in texts and emails and recordings over the past few days, does it? Objection compound and asked and answered. I'll sustain both objections. In fact, this article doesn't contain any details of your relationship with Ms. Hurd. 
Objection, asked and answered. I'll sustain the objection. The only thing that this article states, Mr. Depp, is that in 2016, Amber made accusations of domestic abuse. Correct. I, it was clear that she'd made allegations in 2016. And she so did that when she yes. obtained a restraining order against you in 2016, correct? Um, yeah, I suppose, yes. Yeah, and even if you disagree with the accusations that she made against you in May 2016, it is a true fact that she did make those accusations in 2016 and got a restraining order against you, correct? Objection, compound, asked and answered. Sustain the objections. Next question. To your knowledge, the words that Ms. Heard used in this article about getting a restraining order against you in 2016, those are true, correct? I'm sorry? The Objection words that Ms. Heard used. Document. All right, I'll sustain the objection. You want to... can, you, can you go to um, the third paragraph? Pull up the third paragraph, please. The statement that then two years ago, Ms. Heard became a public figure representing domestic abuse. That is true, isn't it? I'm not sure what we're looking at. Objection. Because, oh, I see it. Yeah. Calls for a legal conclusion. So I'll sustain the objection. It's, it's, I'll it's sustain not. the objection. And in 2016, for the first time publicly, Ms. Heard accused you of domestic abuse, correct? In 2016? Yes. That's correct. No further questions. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, why don't we go ahead and take our morning recess for 15 minutes. Do not do any outside research and do not talk to anybody about the case, okay? We'll come back in 15 minutes. <laughs>
We're ready for the jury? Be seated and redirect. Good afternoon, Mr. Depp. Hi. Could we please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 1? Mr. Depp, is this the version of the op-ed that you recognize? Yes, ma'am. That's the one. Um, I would move Exhibit One, Plaintiff's Exhibit One, into evidence and ask that it be published to the jury. Right. Any objection? No objection. All right, one in evidence and publish. Mr. Depp, when did you see Ms. Hurd's December 18th, 2018 op ed for the first time? It was. Um... It was the. Uh presented to me by one of my team, I can't remember, but um, it was within a day or so of it, a uh, couple of days of it having been written, I, I, I believe. And what was your reaction when you saw it? Shock. Why were you shocked? Because I... At that point, it had been a good solid two, two or so years of this, um, of the accusations, of the allegations um, planted firmly on my back, so something that I had to carry with me. Um, and uh, I just couldn't believe that it, that it was continuing. Um, I, that it was continuing in such a way that the, 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 the it was clear that the more bad press, the more hit pieces that came out on me, the more of these stories of Ms. Heard um, and her righteous um, uh, chase. Um, against me, the, the, it, 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 was, it, it wasn't stopping, and, and um, it's difficult to, um, once you've chewed on it for a couple of years, it becomes pretty difficult to swallow anymore, it, 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 as, it's, as it was completely untrue. How did you feel when you saw the op-ed for the first time? Objection asked and answered just now. I, my prior question was about his reaction. All right, I'll allow it. Hurts. Yeah, a, a, a blinding, um, a blinding hurt. It was, it was like somebody hit me in the back of the head with a two by four. I. I um, and as I said, I had no, <clears throat> I had had no ability to speak prior to, because 
even if I had done an interview to try to explain myself, it turned into a hit piece. So my mouth was uh, shut. Um, and this was the opportunity where I thought it, 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 something's got to be done. It's, got, it's just got to be done. I couldn't take it anymore. When did you first learn that Disney was not going to recast you in the Pirates franchise? It was a, probably two or three days after this op-ed appeared. Um, one of my crew, again, I don't remember who had sent me, <clears throat> excuse me, had sent me um, a, a piece that was in some magazine and Sean Bailey, who was the, the number three. Objection, hearsay. I, I don't know yet. I'll, I'll rule it at this point. Thank you. May, may I continue, Your Honor? Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, Sean Bailey, who was the, uh, the, third, the third in line, as, I suppose, in, in the upper echelon of Disney, um, just basically said in the- Objection, in, hearsay. Uh, Your what Honor, this is, this, is, this is about him it's learning an, about this. Article. It's not for the truth. It, it is the truth. It's, she's asking. If you want to approach, that's great. Mr. Depp, could you please explain to the jury who Sean Bailey is? I, I think you were starting to. Yes, I'll try again. Um, Sean Bailey is the number three, or was at the time, I don't know what his status is anymore, but uh, at the time he was the number three sort of upper echelon of Disney top dogs, and uh, Sean Bailey was quoted as a uh, uh, saying that objection uh, hearsay Mr. Depp where was Sean Bailey quoted without getting into what he was quoted as saying he was quoted in whatever the article was that I was uh, uh, that was brought to my attention and can you please just clarify what article you're referring to I don't know what what uh, journal it came from I don't know what magazine I don't know uh, any of that, so I don't know. I don't know who did the interview with him. Objection, lack of foundation. Yeah. Uh, uh, rule the objection. Go ahead. Mr. Depp, how did you feel when you learned that you were being dropped from the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise? Um, well, it was Pirates of the Caribbean franchise, um, it, it was a character that <clears throat> Captain Jack Sparrow was a character that I had built from the ground up um, and was something that I, 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 of course, put a lot of my, as you do with all characters, but you put a lot of yourself into the character, so, and also having worked on these films with these people and having added much of myself, much of my own uh, um, rewriting of the dialogue and scenes and the jokes and whatever they are, um, I didn't quite understand. <clears throat> how that, after that long relationship and quite a successful relationship, certainly for Disney, um, that they would, but that suddenly I was guilty until proven innocent. Up until the point that you learned that you were 
not going to be in the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise any longer. What was your intention with respect to future Pirates movies? The, the last thing that I knew from the, um, the, the I say the, the, the power, the, the, there's the producer team, there's the creative team, um, and there were many discussions. Um, I, in, in fact, uh, had been approached to take part in writing Objection Pirate hearsay. 6. Mr. Depp, what was your intention with respect to future Pirates movies, aside from what you'd been asked to do? My feeling was that these characters should be able to have their proper goodbye, as it were. A franchise can only last for so long. Um, and um, there's a way to end uh, a franchise like that. And I thought that the characters deserved to, to have their, their way out of, to, to, to end the, the franchise on a, on, a, on a very good note. I planned on continuing I, until it was time to stop. Mr. Depp, um, last week, Mr. Rottenborn asked you about uh, a quote where you said you wouldn't come back to the Pirates franchise for $300 million and a million alpacas. Do you remember that? I do. What, when relative to learning that you would no longer be a part of the Pirates franchise, did you make that statement? I think long before I made the statement, there was <clears throat> a very deep and distinct sense of having been betrayed uh, by the people that I had uh, been working with, the people that I had worked hard for, the people that I had delivered a character to that they initially despised, but somehow, um, you know, even I stuck to my guns with the character and it seemed to work. So, um, do you recall when specifically you made that statement about the three hundred million dollars and the hundred alpacas? Objection. Asked and answered. Oh, overruled. I'll allow it. Um, I believe I made that statement during a press conference in the San Sebastian Film at the San Sebastian Film Festival when I was I was asked about <clears throat> my um, well situation and what year would that have been if you can recall I believe it was last year or so can we please pull up plaintiffs exhibit 804 Mr. Depp, do you recognize this document? As soon as my eyes go on, I hopefully will. Um, Scaramanga Brothers, yes. Pirates of the Caribbean, four and five, yes. Um, what is this document? Don't quite know. I'd have to read it to get some could we, understanding of it. Could we scroll through so Mr. Depp can look at the rest of this document? It looks, uh, this uh, appears to me to be some s s 
species of contract. You know? Is this a contract that you entered into? With Disney. Your Honor, I'd ha ask that uh, plaintiff's exhibit 804 be moved into evidence and published. Any objection? I think it's outside the scope of direct or, or cross-examination. I'll rule on that objection. Okay. And it, well, uh, I'll reserve other objections to portions of the document, um, depending on what she's going to ask about. It could be hearsay. But she's asking to put it all into evidence right now. Well, then I, I would object to that at this point. All right, you want to come forward? Let's see. Okay. I can just get a redacted copy of that at some point. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Depp, if I could direct your attention to section six of the contract, which is on pages eight through 10 of the document. Mr. Depp, what does this reflect? It appears to be the agreement um, of Pirates 4 and 5, comp compensation and <clears throat> merchandise. Mr. Depp, at this time, how many other franchise films have you been a part of? Um, at that time, Alice, Alice in Wonderland. Um, in Wonderland. Um, oh, I'm so pathetic when it comes to knowing what movies I've done. I'm sorry. I, I just, <laughs> I don't watch them. I feel better not watching them. Um, I couldn't, I, I, I mean, I, I, what was the question again? Uh, how many? Uh, how I have many order in the court, or will, I will have you removed. Understood? Thank you. How, how many other franchise films had you been a part of at the time of this contract? Um, there was a third. There was there was Pirates. There was um, oh, sorry, um, with Warner Brothers, uh, Fantastic Beasts, and Where to Find Them, and then Crimes of Grindelwald. And how does the compensation reflected in this contract compare to that, you, what you receive for the other franchises that you've been a part of? Jackson Foundation. He, he just established that he was a member of other franchise films at this point. And he hasn't established a foundation that he knows how he was compensated. For well, I'll overrule the objection if you can answer. Um, I believe um, um, the compensation, obviously, all the, the, the pay and back end and all those things are negotiated by agents, lawyers, and this was a, comparatively this this was a, this is my salary on that film um, and other other salaries were of a similar. Uh, of a similar 
um, status, I suppose. Uh, if I could direct your attention to the 12th page of the document. Yes. Who? Uh, is this your signature, Mr. Depp? Yes, it is. Okay. You can take this down. Thank you. Mr. Depp, I, I recall that you testified that you don't know during a given period what movies you were working on. So my question is, who would know that? Um, well, first and foremost, this is my agent um, or agents. Um, I do recall a couple of the other films that I'd made after. One was um, initially called Richard Says Goodbye, and that was uh, they changed the name to the professor, and uh, during all of the <clears throat> the um, nastiness over the past uh, six years, uh, that film went straight to uh, pay per view. Um, there was um, another film called Minimata, it was produced, uh, uh, it was, uh, my, co my company, uh, Infinitum Nile, uh, we had uh, developed a, a film called Minimata about Eugene Smith and uh, the Minimata, uh, uh, the, the, well, the, 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 po the mercury poisoning of, of a very small fishing village in um, southern Japan. Um, there was that one, and then there was a film called um, Waiting for the Barbarians with uh, one Mark Rylance um, and Robert Pattinson. Um, those were three films that I had done. Mr. Depp, during your cross-examination, Mr. Rottenborn showed you a number of text messages between you and, and Paul Bettany. Do you remember that? I do. Um, could you explain, please explain to the jury what your relationship with Mr. Bettany is? Uh, Mr. Bettany and I had, uh, we'd met um, while I was making a film called The Tourist in, in Venice, and we were, um, it was an instant connection. He's, he's uh, born and bred in the UK and uh, has a, that English uh, sort of dry, kind of obtuse, abstract sense of humor. Um, and that was one of the things that we connected on is uh, taking, even if it was a, a difficult uh, or on, unpleasant situation, we would, you know, do our best to deal with it with humor as opposed to just a constant complaint or whining or anything of that nature. We dealt with it with humor, albeit sometimes um, in, as these are private texts that uh, have been there was there was a lot of um, in context. It's important to know that n none of it was ever intended to be real, and the language that's used, which I yes, I am ashamed that um, that has to be <clears throat> spread on the uh, on the world like. Um, peanut butter, <laughs> I, uh, w w for example, the text that is about um, burning Ms. Hurd is, it's, 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 a, it's directly from Monty Python um, in the sketch about burning witches um, and then drowning the witches, this is a, 
This is a film that I, we'd all watched when we were 10, and it, it, it's, it's just um, irreverent and abstract humor. Um, that's what we were referring to in those texts. The, the text message that you just referenced, other than Mr. Betney, who else saw that text message at the time that it was sent? No one. Of course not. Based on your own observations, how would you describe Mr. Betney's relationship with Ms. Hurd while you and Ms. Hurd were together? Abominable. Why was that? Um, Ms. Hurd despised uh, Mr. Petney because, mainly because we had become such close friends and for her, he was a threat um, and would take me away from her in, with regard to if Paul Bettany was getting the attention from me. That that was a that was a, that was a showstopper. It, it would it would cause all kinds of um, unpleasant trees to the point of where I, when we were on the island with uh, Mr. Bettany, his wife and his uh, four children. Um, Ms. Hurd and Mr. Bettany got into some debate over lunch, and I just remember that whenever Mr. Bettany tried to make a point, she would talk over him, and then it started to get quite rude. She got, she got mean. Um, and she got loud, and then his, I believe it was his 18-year-old boy who was, he was, he was getting ready to go to a really a very bright, bright, brilliant kid. He entered the uh, conversation because these, this was something to do with what he'd studied in school, and he knew quite a lot about it, and he voiced his opinion, and... Uh, Ms. Hurd demeaned that young man to the point of where he where he he burst into uh, tears and walked away. Um, and it was at that point that I had spoken to Ms. Hurd and said, "That's that's just unacceptable. It, that behavior is unacceptable." You have no right to 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 to, to demean that boy. To, to, to you cannot always be right. You should try being wrong sometime because you might learn something. And then um, I asked her. I asked her to. I thought it was best that she leave the island. <clears throat> we please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 245? And Mr. Depp, I believe this is another text message with Mr. Betney that you were shown on your cross-examination. Oh, um, and directing your attention to the text message at the top of the page from May 30th, 2014, do you recognize this text message you sent to Paul Betney? Yes, I do. And could you please describe to the jury what you are conveying to Mr. Bettany in this message? This again is, it's a, this is a, I suppose an example of the way that I write um, and ex express myself. That is to say, you stretch you stretch the um, you stretch your situation out to 
to give him the understanding that you're drowning, essentially. So everything that I say here is, in fact, an impossibility for the human body. I, I, I would have been, well, I would have certainly at least had to be rushed to the hospital for a stomach pump. Um, there's a line here that, if, if you don't mind, I say that when I say I'm done, I am admittedly too fucked, pardon me, fucked in the head to spray ra my rage at the one I love for little reason as well. I'm too old to be that guy, but pills are fine. The pills that were referenced were were the pills that I had had to, that I was coming off of. And um, they were the only thing that could give me some semblance of the same numb, numbing effect that I searched for as a child with, uh, with my mother. And saying that I was too messed up in the head was, it, it, it's kind of like if you've been told since you were a child that everything you do is wrong, um, and that uh, I shouldn't have even been alive, or whatever, you know, joyous little treats that my, my then very sick, very ill mother um, uh, brought to me. Um, Ms. Hurd was well aware of my past, my childhood, therefore was uh, very adept at knowing exactly which buttons to push. So at this point, I mean, I, I felt like, well, I was that little boy again in my head, like, of course, I guess I'm, I guess I'm the, I guess I am incapable of doing anything right. I guess I will never be happy. I guess that this is who, who, who I am. I can't get along with this person. What? But but it was it's confusion. You know, it's um, it's it's nothing that you can. It's nothing that anyone could sustain for any length of time. It's it's nothing that anyone should have to sustain for any length of time when you're being demeaned, berated judged um, um, and, 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 and treated like a lesser animal and treated as if uh, I'm only surrounded by yes men and that I'm a bad father and that it was, these things were endless. They, they, they were endless and they There was, there, were, there was no call for them. I, I, it's hard to understand why someone that is supposed to love you um, could be that cruel. And I, I, there's also times where you just say, okay, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to not have a, I won't fall for the argument. I won't participate in the argument. Um, because I knew where it would go into her circular pattern of um, uh, psychological uh, abuse. Mr. Depp, what do you mean when you use the term blackout in this text message? Um, blackout. Yes, because I'm, I'm talking about a thousand Red Bulls and vodkas, a thousand of them, two bottles of champagne, um, 
no food for days, half a bottle of whiskey. Um, th those things, had that been all absolutely true, would have not only caused a blackout, but it would have caused uh, a severe um, alcohol poisoning, um, overdose. Um, I would have had to have gone immediately. If that were true, I'd have, I would have had to have been taken to a hospital or I'd just die. Um, so, no, um, blackout is when someone gets so uh, drunk on alcohol, essentially, on, on, on alcohol. Um, but the, the pills that I was, that I had my addiction, uh, that, that I was addicted to, the, the roxycodone, which are very, very powerful opiates, um, I, two, two of those would knock me out. That is to say, so there's blackout, which is, you can be, a, a person could be wide awake and wreaking havoc or having a giggle in a blackout and never remember it. But when you go, when you are, um, when you've taken the, the prescription medication, the, the, it, it, it knocks you out. You are certainly not, well, you're not in any condition to, first of all, swing at anyone. You are out. You, you, you go on what's called the nod, and then it takes you away into sleep. It's just very deep sleep, and um, I found that much more accepting than having to hear constant uh, badgering and insults. Mr. Depp, I'd like to show you Defendant's Exhibit 153, which um, I believe Mr. Rottenborn also showed you last week. Yes. Do you remember seeing this during Mr. Rottenborn's examination of you last week? Yeah, yes, I do. Okay. Now, I, I'd like to show you the, the full text exchange, which is in Plaintiff's Exhibit 120. And since there's been a number of uh, text messages drawn from this document, this would be Plaintiff's Exhibit 120C. Which page would that be, or underscore? Uh, this would be four and okay. Five, Your Honor. Four and five, thank you. Mr. Depp, do you recognize these text messages? Yes, I do. Your Honor, I'd move um, plaintiff's 120C into evidence and ask that it be published to the jury. No All right, 120C in evidence, publish. Mr. Depp, who are you communicating with in these text messages? Um, in fact, though it says Marino, um, I was, these are texts between my um, ex, uh, that is to say the Vanessa Paradis, the mother of my children. And this is a, again, abstract humor um, that, we're, that we're conveying back and forth to one another. Uh, this was all, um, it, it's, it was a joke. It wasn't about, it certainly wasn't about Miss Hurd. We didn't speak of her much together. Do you recall what you were talking about? I don't recall um, who it was. Um, I, I don't recall who it was, but it was, it, it was someone who had, um, For some reason, I think it was, oh, I think the possibility is 
the 2013. It might have been, we had a nanny at one point um, who we, in fact, we had, uh, we found her, we, she was caught stealing even from, even from my, um, at the time my, uh, yeah, maybe 10, 11 year old boy, Jack, who was bright enough because he knew it, he was bright enough. He had a, he had a $5 bill that he wadded up and put on his desk in his bedroom and when he came home from school. Your Honor, I'm just going to object on relevance. The question right. was, who was this about? Yeah, we, we can move on. OK. OK. Uh, Mr. Depp, I'd also like to show you Defendant's Exhibit 143, which I believe Mr. Rottenborn also showed you last week. Um, do you remember seeing this email exchange? You could scroll down as well, please. Thank you. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, who are you exchanging these emails with? Uh, Stephen Duders, who was at the time was my assistant. And <coughs> what are you and Mr. Duders discussing here? Um, gobbledygook essentially it was it was uh, as I remember it was a day of work and um, there were times when I would send a text to Mr. Duders because he's the worrisome type I, I would send him a text in jest of course and and uh, to, to get a rise out of him, to get some reaction out of him. So, um, y you know, I would tell him things like, uh, you know, I woke up and um, I'm bleeding profusely from, from the inside of my ear. Is that normal? You know, it would be things like that. So this is exactly the same kind of thing. I think we were even referencing a... Uh, uh, the Hangover, uh, the film The Hangover, uh, in 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 part of this about the Mike Tyson and um, sort of bizarre uh, circus that I was telling him that I had in in my room and that there was blood everywhere. It was it was a joke to just sort of throw him off, worry him, and make. Ultimately, it was a joke, and we, we were laughing about it. Mr. Depp, what if any portion of this email exchange is literally true? We're all set to leave here at approximately 1.30 p.m. Hope you rested well. Mr. Depp, I'd like to talk to you about some text messages that Mr. Rottenborn showed you where you refer to the monster, and this is in the context of in conversations with that don't include Ms. Heard. Do you remember seeing some of those communications? Yes. Okay. Uh, first, I'd like to show you Defendant's Exhibit 427, please, which is a text message from you to Jerry Judge. How are you using the term monster in this context when you're communicating with Mr. Judge? The monster, the monster could essentially, the monster could, it, 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 it could be two separate things. The monster in her eyes was my, um, Objection as to what the monster was in Ms. Hurd's eyes, Your Honor. All right. I guess it's data to her eyes if you want to okay. ask. Rephrase. The, the monster was defined um, by Ms. Hurd as this 
out of control. Same objection, thing. Your Honor. What Ms. Hurd's view of the monster was is not for this witness to say. Mr. Depp, how do you know how Ms. Hurd defined the word monster? Um, she said the words to me. And how, what words did she say with respect to the term monster? It was, it was her go-to phrase. And it was the go-to phrase for me being, again, you know, as has been embellished and elaborated, um, the drug use or the drink or the whatever. But the monster was, for me, and again, you start to think about these things and you put it in your own head in what the real context is. The monster was sobriety. The monster was, was trying to be, to, to, to be sober because I was plagued by these uh, requests to, to stop drinking. Um, but the monster could also be, uh, if, a, <clears throat> if, a, if, a, if a conversation, if, it, if something starts as a conversation, which would quickly ramp up to um, uh, quite an antagonizing argument, um, if I responded to her, if I took part in the verbal back and forth where people do in life end up saying obscenities, screaming obscenities at one another or, or calling them names or, or, or it, it, when it gets to that point, um, I mean, the, the monster was just the, for me was just the guy who actually was dumb enough to, 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 to continue to take part in arguments that would ultimately get nowhere. Um, so that, that is one of the reasons why I would try to get away from Ms. Hurd and not participate in her debates and her the knowledge that she wanted to express to me and uh, circular and painful um, insults that were constant, it was rapid fire. So I stopped participating in those. I tried to walk away. I tried to go to another room, even to the point of locking myself in rooms so that she just could pound, pound on the door and scream. Um, that 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 was clearly a mis I should have never fallen for that or taken the bait to to allow myself to get into a conversation which led to an argument which led to physical violence. It it, 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 it was not going to be good, so I would uh, I would just walk away, which drove her through the roof. So, Mr. Depp, why would you use the term monster when, dis when communicating with people other than Ms. Hurd? Well, uh, because I heard it all the time. I mean, it was, as I said, that was, that was her go-to, the monster, the monster's here, the monster's back, the monster. Um, so I would refer to the monster again in terms of some, with, with uh, Elton or with friends, Patty Smith, uh, the monster was, uh, like with Elton, I think it was just a monster was, I, I, you know, I let the monster creep back in or something. That is sobriety. That's, that's what I'm telling him is, I have, I have failed, um, and I, and I've had a drink, or I've been drinking. But 
my drinking again was not to excess. There was no, I would never went into blackouts or anything of that nature. I was disappointed in myself uh, for not not staying there. Though, when you are constantly in a position to be harassed by your beloved other. Um, y y y what else could I do? I, I wanted to be numb. I didn't want to hear that. I didn't want to feel that, especially from one, from one who had professed such love for me, but gave me mostly hatred. Uh, Your Honor, I'm about to switch subjects, so if this would be a good time for the lunch break. Right. We started a little later, so I don't mind going a little further. Okay. If you want to do that, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Depp, uh, I'd like to show you Defendant's Exhibit 161. I believe uh, Mr. Rottenborn showed you this last week and, and again today. Yes, yes. Do you recognize these text messages as between you and Ms. Hurd? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Um, why are you informing Ms. Hurd that there's a book called Disco Bloodbath? I, at that, when I texted her, yeah, 2.30 in the afternoon, I was, uh, I was in a bookstore, um, a, a, a used bookstore, or a, a um, bookstore that had a lot of first editions and things like that, which was sort of a passion. And I saw a book called Disco Bloodbath, and I thought it was, uh, I thought it was a funny title. Uh, I can't say that I was necessarily referencing anything other than I thought it was a funny title, Disco Bloodbath. Um, it sounded like a, a sort of a bad slasher movie to me. So I said, just thought you should know that there exists a book titled Disco Bloodbath. That's all. And then she said, we need that book. And then she asked me, is, is it about last Friday night by any chance? And then um, my, my answer uh, to her, how can you make me smile about such a hideous moment? The, the fact is, uh, this, this is a lighthearted exchange that she's even saying, we need that book. Then she makes reference to last Friday night, which I don't recall what last Friday night was or whatever, so I just um, how can you make me smile about such a hideous moment? I, I, a hideous moment could have been some grotesque thing that we saw on television. It could have been anything. I, I don't recall now, but all I was saying is, and it even says at the end of my text, that's all disco bloodbath, you know. Um, so I, I, this was not a, uh, we were not butting heads in this exchange whatsoever. It was very lighthearted. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Depp, I'd like to show you Defendant's Exhibit 375, which is another document Mr. Rottenborn showed you last week. Yes. Um, could you please remind the jury what's reflected in this photograph? Um, um, on the, this, this is from Australia. Uh, on March 8th, I believe it was where um, after my finger had been, um, the tip of my finger had been taken off, um, I, I began to, I was in such shock, I just started writing on the mirror on the on walls and 
and um, basically what these were for me to Ms. Hurd were reminders of moments in our past where I had caught her, caught her, where it was revealed to me even by her that uh, she had been caught in lies that she had told me. So that's what these are in reference to. The, the, the red, the lipstick um, that says, call Carly Simon, uh, call Carly Simon, she said it better, babe, um, in reference to you're so vain, I am imagining. But that's not, my, I didn't, uh, the Carly Simon message is not mine. That's Ms. Hurd's. So let's just break this down a little bit. Who, who wrote the, the text that's in black on the mirror? That, that would be me. And, and what does that say? Um, uh, she loves, I don't know, like naked Hollywood or something. Um, an artist of, I don't know what the rest says, but is, what that is, is Ms. Hurd had come to me and she was seriously, seemed to be seriously concerned about how she was being portrayed in, in Hollywood. She was, she was concerned that because she had done films where there was uh, kind of arbitrary nudity and things of that nature, she had voiced to me that she did not want to be, um, she, she didn't want to be looked upon that way in the industry. She wanted to be able to escape the, the chains of being objectified by the Hollywood system, which is a difficult thing for any woman, certainly, uh, unfortunately. But she, she, she asked me, how can, I, how can I avoid being stereotyped as the, as the beautiful blonde who, who gets her breasts out or goes naked and has to stoop people in, in movies? Uh, and I gave her my um, ad advice on it, on how on how to avoid it, which I thought was pretty accurate, and uh, it she uh, her ambition was uh, stronger than than um, than what she received from my advice uh, is, is is what it was. My advice that I thought long and hard about because I did care for her and I did understand. I didn't want her to have to do that. And early on in my career, I, I was put in a position where, you know, I could have gone on, I could have been just a guy who was on a TV series for a couple of years. And then, you know, what was going to be left of me was, uh, would be on lunch boxes and thermoses and uh, posters and teen idol things. And I, I fought that tooth and nail um, because I didn't, that's not who I was. So I, I, had, had, I had experienced something similar in, in terms of being looked upon as something that you're not. And so I fought against it in the very beginning. and. Um, it, it worked out for me for, you know, for a while there, and uh, I was giving her basically the same advice. Now, Mr. Depp, you said that you did not write this portion that's in red here that says Carly Simon said it, call Carly Simon, she said it better, babe. Is that right? Yes, no, I, that's, that's not mine. Um, how do you know that it was Ms. Hurd that wrote that? Objection, lack of foundation. Overruled, though. 
the cancer? There are, um, it's, well, first it doesn't, it looks like it's trying to match my handwriting, but my handwriting is, is a lot more uh, of a scribble. Um, and also there's another photograph of this where she went in to make sure that there were, uh, uh, that the red um, was more prominent. Um, I believe there's also a napkin down there where Question, someone- Your Honor, lack what, of foundation. He's referring to exhibits that are, aren't in evidence and all right, I'll have no I'll, idea whether they even exist. I'll sustain the objection now. Next question. Was, do you recall whether the lipstick writing was on the mirror when you wrote in the, the black paint? No, of course not, no. Mr. Depp, I'd like to show you one of the text messages that Mr. Rottenborn showed you concerning the injury to your finger. So if we could please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 398. Um, this is a text message from you to Dr. Kipper that I believe Mr. Rottenborn showed you on cross-examination. Do you remember that? Yes. Okay. And why are you apologizing to Dr. Kipper in this message? Um. I believe that um, at, at that point in, in my brain and in my life and in my heart, I was um, completely and utterly frustrated with how I had to, or how I was living my life and I had had some uh, disagreement with uh, Dr. Kipper and uh, I was I was apologizing to him for having um, uh, gone against his uh, his wishes or gone against his advice let's say what did you mean when you said, I have chopped off my left middle finger as a reminder that I should never cut off, cut my right finger off again? It's, again, it's my way of dealing with, um, dealing with a painful situation. It's, it's, it's my way of dealing with a painful situation where I resort to humor. So I had lost the tip of my right finger and so I'm saying to him, I've now cut off my left finger to remind me never to cut my right finger off again. That's, that's not, I mean, when you say I got my finger cut off or I cut my finger off or this or that, it doesn't necessarily mean that you did it yourself and again, I'm a guitarist and have been since I was 12 and that was the only piece that I found in my life at the age of 12 where I knew what I, I knew who I could, that I could escape into music and learn music and the last thing I'm a guitar, I mean, I, I still play the guitar with, it's still my first love, aside from my children, it's still my first love. There's no reason in the world why I literally would cut my own finger off to ruin this, this beautiful opportunity 
that I was given at 12 to learn how to play the guitar. Um, and, 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 and uh, again, wh why would I start lopping off digits at, in my 50s? If I, if I um, as Mr. Rottenborn suggests, I'm a, I'm a kind of, you know, a walking tantrum. Um, when I was younger, I, uh, what, what, why wouldn't I just start chopping off fingers and, or, 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 or some kind of, why would I ruin the only thing that was really good in my life aside from my children? So. When this finger went, the tip of this finger went, um, the only thing I could think in my mind was, thank God it wasn't the left hand, which is the fret hand. I'm right-handed, so that's the fret. That's where the fretboard is. If you lose a finger from your left hand, you know, I'm not Django Reinhardt, who had only two fingers to play with. Um, if I'd have lost a finger from here, uh, I would have had to relearn how to play the guitar all over again. Um, it, 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 it's just not the case. Even though I say I've chopped my finger off, it, it's like saying, you know, I, 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 I bumped into a knife uh, or something, you know. It's, it's, it's not, I'm not admitting to, I think if I was going to admit to someone that I actually chopped my finger off, this text wouldn't be as it is. I think it would have been a long explanation as to why I got to that point. But uh, no, I can't take responsibility for what I now call Little Richard, my chopped finger. Uh, Mr. Depp, at the time that you sent this text message to Dr. Kipper, um, had you told him what had actually happened to your right finger? Oh, 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 oh yes, yeah. Oh. And, and when did you tell him that? He was aware of that that, that day, the so day that it happened. Malcolm was aware of it. Jerry was aware of it. Stephen was, everyone was aware of it. And, and when I, and of course, yes, when I went to the doctor, the emergency room, I lied to them because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think it wise to cause a ruckus, implicate Miss Heard, and then have eight million stories out in the press about <clears throat> how she'd thrown a bottle of vodka at my, at me, and it smashed the, all the bones in the tip of my finger and cut off about, well, it was all sliced down through, you've seen the pictures. <laughs> it was pretty horrible. Um, it was, it was, and I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to. Th I didn't want to put her in that situation. I didn't want to put any of us in that situation. I didn't want to put the film in that situation. That was why I said it was crushed in an accordion door, and it was only the second doctor who had uh, who actually told me what he what he. he was, Your Honor, hearsay. I haven't finished my sentence. How do you know? Uh, I'll allow you for the moment. Go ahead. Go ahead. Should I? Thank you. Um, it was this, the emergency room doctor was first. The next day, I went to see a specialist, a, a hand surgeon, in, and this was still in Australia. And he had recognized that my excuse for the finger being gone. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay, what the doctor conveyed to him about his thoughts on the finger injury. That's 
classic hearsay? Uh, Your Honor, it's in the context of medical treatment. No, I'll sustain that objection. Okay. Um, Your Honor, I think this is That's a good, good stopping point. Right. Yes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll go ahead and take our, our lunch recess again. Do not do any outside, um, any outside discussions, and don't talk to each other about it. Okay, and we'll see you after lunch. Okay. If everybody in the courtroom could still be quiet, please. Court is in session. Thank you. So we can take a recess till 2.20. Just for planning purposes, though, I plan to go to 5.30 today since we had a late start. So just to let you know. And I know you plan on having a remote witness, which is fine. Just let us know so we can set that up. Um, but also make sure your remote witness knows that this is a courtroom. I don't expect them to be any outside uh, noises or anything else going on in direct attention. And also if they would know that if there's an objection for them to hold off answering until that's resolved. That goes for all remote witnesses when we get to them, okay? All right. See you at 220 then. Thank you. Thank you.